Hello students, once again I welcome you all to Mixo study. So we are discussing some questions which are important for your need as your chapter biodiversity and conservation is considered. In this whole session we will be discussing about the 10 questions, how we can approach these questions and what, uh, what is the different strategies that we have to follow. So that we will be discussing in today's class. I have chosen those 10 questions, they are important. The basically this type of questions this normally comes in the NEET exam. So we will start with the question number 1 and simultaneously I will discuss the different questions and what are the alternative of those questions that can be asked in the NEET exam. So that I will discuss. The first question is related to the national park. Management of the national park is controlled by. Now it is written over here the national park. Most of the students will get confused and they will look, uh, they will uh, tick the answer like state government or the central government. But when we talk about the national park, we have uh, different national parks in our, um, ho our whole country. Now I have given you one list of those national parks. Those national parks where exactly they are present, what is the speciality, in, it means uh, uh, what are the different organisms which are there in uh, those national parks, they are important. In each national park, there is some core regions which is not disturbed by the human activities. That is a national park. When we see this particular type of question, that, that thing I have already discussed, that is controlled by the United Nations. UN, United Nations, they manage these national parks. Now, just give me one example of the national park. Very good example is a Kaziranga National Park that is there in the Assam. So this is option number C. Now okay, so we have another same question and this question is related to the different national parks and where they are present. The reason why I am taking these two questions simultaneously is that as I have already given you one list of these national parks where exactly they are situated. Again and again I am telling you these are very 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 important every year the one definite one question will come from this particular topic only. So you can prepare one chart, in that chart you can on one side you can write all those national parks where they are situated and in which what type of animals they live there. So th by this reading the three columns stick that, col stick that chart near to your any of the places and just read that again and again. When you will see that again and again, read that again and again, that will remain in your brain for longer time. At least till NEET exam, till your exam, just remember those important national parks where they are situated because definitely this year also that this uh, one question will come. In the column 1, the Jim Corbett National Park is written. The Jim Corbett National Park, you must have visited also, the Jim Corbett National Park, this is present in the Uttarakhand. They are basically present in the Nainital. So the correct option is the fourth, A fourth option. Now let's look for the option for the A fourth. These two seems to be correct one, right? Similarly, Kaziranga National Park is famous for the one horned rhinoceros and this is present in the Assam. In the Assam, this is present. For the B option, we know that the fifth option is a correct one, Assam. For the B, we know that the fifth option is a correct, that means this seems to be correct, D option. Though I cannot read further, though I got my options, but still I will read further, but you can stop here also if you are having very less time and you are, when you are confident for the two options, you are 100% confident for the two options, then don't go further, don't waste your time, move ahead. Next is written over here that means for the C, the Mahavir Harina Vanasthali National Park. Mahavir Harina National Park is present in Andhra Pradesh, right? That means for the C, the second option is the correct one and this is written over here, the second option is the correct one. Kyo, Kyo Ladio Ghana National Park, Ghana, Kyo Ladio Ghana National Park is present in the Rajasthan. So the correct option for the D is the third one. So the name itself indicate we were confident after 
the first two option only so the correct option is a d option this is how you can approach very good approach and very easy also and time saving approach now this is the next question question number 3 breeding ground for migratory flamingo is normally there are there are many migratory birds migratory birds are those uh, birds which are native to one particular space uh, one particular space and later on after some time when they have to breed they go to some another place so that the favorable conditions can they can give to their progenies so this is how uh, this is the reason why they go for the migration basically why they migrate they migrate they migrate migration is very important because they want that suitable conditions should be there and in the prevailing condition in the native space uh, space basically the temperature sometimes is very high as per the mig migratory flamingo their native places they are comparatively you can say they are quite uh, um, uh, you can say they are very uh, cold condition they come and later on after some time when they migrate what happens is that they migrate to the arid places so the breeding ground for the migratory flamingo is the area between the khadir and the pancham islands in the green run of uh, in the in the great run of kutch right so the correct option is the b one why i have chosen this question is that the breeding ground this is important and also you you should make one list of these migratory birds right and these migratory birds they are also important only 4 to 5 migratory birds are there and you can easily remember all those migratory birds why they go from one place to another what is the importance and what are the species that comes to india for the breeding and etc so this was a question in number 3 correct option is the b let's look for the fourth question the government of india in 1980s has introduced a concept to work closely with the local communities for protecting and managing forest the concept is yes in india to in 1980 this was introduced a concept so that we can be close to the forest and this was the major you can say the work which was started in the direction of a joint forest management where we can manage those forest because they are the rich source of biodiversity without conserving our forest we cannot conserve our whole earth so this is very important in 1980 the joint forest management was done so this was a whole concept so that the local communities who are living near to that forest they can help in conserving those forests so this was a joint forest management for the fourth correct option is a c let's look at the next question which one of the following is not used for ex situ plant conservation now when we talk about the conservation strategies conservation means to protect the biodiversity there are two ways of conservation of biodiversity one of the ways is called as in situ conservation in situ conservation and another is called as ex situ conservation as a name indicate in situ conservation that means in their natural habitat that means we are conserving those biodiversity in their own natural habitat own natural habitat whereas the ex situ conservation that means we are conserving the species not in their natural habitat not in their natural habitat rather than we are keeping those sometime we do uh, preserve their genes sometime we do preserve sometime we keep those in a botanical garden in the zoological uh, in the zoos etc they all come under the ex situ type of conservation that means our major motive is a conservation of the biodiversity either in the time of the in situ case of the in situ we have 
national parks we have sanctuaries etc national park sanctuaries etc they all come under the in situ whereas in ex situ for example botanical garden botanical garden for example zoo etc and you can take the example of gene bank right they all come under the ex situ sort of conservation now come back to the question which one of the following is not used for the ex situ plant conservation that means we have to conserve the plant but in their not in their natural habitat seed bank is one of the procedure by which we conserve their germ plasm and basically the major reason for their preservation the major uh, procedure which they follow for the conservation is called as a cryo preservation that means at a very lower temperature with the help of ni liquid nitrogen we conserve those seeds right so that whenever in future suppose that species uh, that particular species have extinct extinct in that case is those seeds uh, those seeds can be used again so this is a sort of the ex situ conservation next is called as a shifting cultivation shifting cultivation that means some of the um, man some of uh, organisms they uses one particular land for agriculture purposes later on they burn that land and they go back to another land when they go to another land they left they leave that particular land which in which it they were there for in the previous time they leave that for some time so that the all the inorganic nutrients they could be regained this is called as a shifting cultivation shifting cultivation is nothing to do with the ex situ conservation but rather than they are doing what they are destroying the forest that means destroying the forest forest that means we have one species that live over here they remain over here they cultivate over here and later on they migrate cultivate over here and later on they migrate to some another place they do cultivation over there what they do they burn these particular places and after that they again burn this they go back to another place and again they go go like this so in that cases what we are doing we are affecting the biodiversity we are killing those biodiversity we are killing those organism which live over here so this is not related to that next we have is a botanical gardens botanical gardens they are used to preserve some botan botany means a plants they are used to preserve those plants in their live condition it's like those gardens right and we have a different garden botanical gardens in india as well next is a field field gene banks as like that of the seed banks we have gene banks also in the gene bank we conserve those genes which are there in the seeds which are there in the uh, different uh, organisms which are about to extinct so this is also one of the important procedure for the conservation for the ex situ conservation i would rather say so out of these the b option the shifting cultivation is a wrong option that is not included in the ex situ plant conservation so the correct option for the question number b is the question number 5th is a b let's look at this next question question number 6 quite big question and easy also the following graph would depict change in the two population a and the b or the herbivore in the grassy field possible reason for changes is that now what is happening i have number of organisms over here the number of organism for the species a they remain stable for some time and later on they decline whereas a number of organism for the species b they are stable but they are less as compared to the species a but they keep on increasing after some time that means with the due course of the time the b species this is more adapted this becomes more adapted and whereas the number of the a they are getting declined so what is happening they are more adapted now when they are more adapted that means they are producing more number of progenies 
more number of progeny they are producing when they are producing more number of the progeny, progeny we can see that the drastic increase in the number of the organisms is there now let us look for the option which is more suitable as per your question number 6 is considered both plant population in this habitat decreased is that so both are decreased no not at all both are not decreased but the B population has increased the A population decreased so correct this correct option is a, a population B competed more successfully for food than population A that means they are they are living together after some time the competition was there they survived because they become now more adapted they produce more progeny number of individual has increased so this can be the right option let us look for the C option population A produce more offspring than population B if population A is producing more offspring then this graph will not be like this this graph could, could be in a straight line or could be some like this so the C option is a correct uh, incorrect option population A consumed the members of population B population A number is decreasing how can we say that they have consumed B but B is more we can say in a vice versa that B population has consumed consumed the population A we can say that but it is written over here in a different way so this is also a wrong option correct option for the question number 6 is the B option right now we have another question Which of one of the following statements is incorrect for the biodiversity? Now students it is written over here incorrect. So this first of all whenever you are reading the any question, while reading that question just keep this thing in your mind, in the question whether it is written uh, uh, correct or incorrect, yes, no, did or did not, do one thing just round that. So that whenever you are reading that question, whenever you are uh, uh, reading those options, you can this will clearly comes in your mind. They are asking about the incorrect, they are asking about the correct, or this, they are asking about these are or these are not. So do one thing, do underline that with a dark line. It is written over here. We are talking about the biodiversity and we have to look for the option which is incorrect. Biodiversity increase from the higher altitude to lower altitude quite obvious that those or many organisms they are more on land rather than those organisms which are on the hilltop they are less because at the hilltop the con conditions are comparatively harsh whereas in case of the proper land the environmental conditions are quite stable as we go more towards upper side every kilometer we go towards upper side when we move towards the hill, when we go towards the height of the hill, we can see that the temperature decreases. Temperatures decreases, that means the conditions are less stable. Though, I am not saying that the population will be less over there, the animals will be less over there. They will be there, but as compared to the normal land, the population will be less. So, this is quite correct, that is population diversity increases with higher altitude to lower altitude. Right? That means we are moving from a height to the ground. So this seems to be a correct option. The B option indicated the depletion in the genetic diversity of crop plant. Means genetic diversity means diversity in their uh, genes. I would rather say depletion is there in the crop plant. This is mainly due to introduction of the better varieties with high yield and disease resistance. Because today we have a number of the germplasm. With the due time, we know that we are focusing on those particular crops which are which can produce more yield, which are disease resistant. So we are going towards one direction only. But today we have enough of biodiversity. But with time, there are chances that if we shift towards one side, we will be focusing on those germplasm which will provide us a suitable characteristics. So this is also a correct option that is depletion in the genetic diversity of a crop plant is mainly due to introduction of the better varieties because after some time even today also we focus on those plants normally what we try to do 
everyone has some garden areas uh, near their houses or in their houses we prefer those flowers which bloom very fast we prefer those uh, uh, fruit plants which give fruits within a short interval of time so that means we are going for the changes recombinant uh, plants any changes which are there in the germplasm normally any of the plant for example papaya papaya can produce plants uh, earlier the papaya was like that they can produce flowers on uh, they can produce these fruits only when they are longer they are enough of long but today we have those varieties today which can produce these fruit when they are short even when the plant height is shorter so that what are we getting we are getting a high yield and we are going towards in one direction rather than going towards the biodiversity or the genetic diversity we are focusing on one's own one or two specific reasons only so this is also a correct option question num uh, so option number c the richest reservoir of animal and the plant life with a few or the no threatened species are called as a biodiversity hotspot now tell me one thing what do, what do you mean by biodiversity hotspot biodiversity hotspots they are those regions which are having a richness in the biodiversity but mainly the organisms they are more than 1500 over there a uh, organism means to say one particular species the number is high but they are getting depleted again and again they are threatened species are there but so this is the wrong option we'll discuss about the biodiversity i have chosen one question which is related to the biodiversity hotspot don't get worry so this is a wrong option we'll discuss definitely when i'll discuss about the next question so the incorrect option till now is a c let's look for the d option biodiversity decreases from equator to polar region this is also a right that means at the equator the population they are more the pole the population are less polar region that means arctic and the antarctic region and in the polar region we we can see that all the condition they are in permafrost all everything over there is a frozen form when it is there in the frozen form the species to live over there it's very difficult and we can see that all the barren lands are there and within uh, of the whole years 10 to 11 months they are in frozen conditions so we can see that at the equator temperature is quite variable we have winters also we have summers also so the biodiversity is more on the equator this is also a correct option so the incorrect option is option number c as per the question number 7 is considered let's look for the next option next question sorry eighth question now the same question i have chosen it is related to the biodiversity an area is declared as a hot spot area is declared as a hot spot when it has a more number of endemic species endemic species are those species which are restricted to that area which are native species i would rather say native species more native species are there and 75% of its original habitat is low lost and this is a hot spot that means we have to focus on those particular areas they are called as a hot spot that means chances that they may get lost and we have to focus on that particular area this is called as a hot spot for the question number 8 the a option is a correct one let's look for the another option b it has 1500 or more vertebrate species it's not related to the vertebrates or invertebrates it's just that we are talking about the whole species number and 75% of the original habitat is lost it has more than 2000 species of the plant no not at all no specification is done basically the whole species we can say that and most of the species inhabiting in that area is facing the risk of extinction this is also one of the correct but the more correct in this case is a 1500 or more species which is a defined number defined definition so this is this you have to remember now one another important question now reason for choosing such question is that what we have to learn from this question is that first read this question antelope cervicobra is a mammal commonly known as a black buck is animal under data deficient category of the wildlife it's threatened indian wildlife 
Now, this antelope cervi copra, this is an endangered species. Endangered species. For this question also, why reason, why I have chosen this question? That means for this particular type of question, you have to prepare one chart which is related to the endangered species. Some important endangered species, normally we have n number of endangered species, no need to go into that. Just remember what are the endangered species which is there in India. Why they are endangered? What are critically endangered? What do you mean by those which are vulnerable? Exact difference between these three type of species should be known to you. Right? They definitely ask this question from this pattern also. So, antelope cervicora is a mammal. Yes, this is a mammal. And the commonly we call it as a black buck. You all are acquainted with the black buck? Salman Khan was associated with this case. Right? Now you will not forget that ever in your life. So, this A and the B is the correct one. So, C indicates the animal under the data deficient category. No, not at all. This is a wrong one. And the D is a threatened Indian wildlife. This is also a right. So, the correct option is A, B and D. This was a quite different question. So, I thought to take this question. So, that you can, how you, uh, this is how you can remember all these questions. In this case, the A, B and D, all three are the correct options. Right? Let us look for the next question. Question number 10. An institution where vulnerable plant materials likely to become irrevitability lost in the wild or in the cultivation is preserved in the whole viable condition. Now, they are talking about one institution where we are conserving those wildlife in their viable conditions. We are conserving them in their viable condition and the most Basically, what they are, they are about to extinct, they are sorry, they are extinct, but we cannot revert them back. We can revert them back and because we have today the gene bank with us. In the gene bank, the genes of those species, are conserved. Genes of those species are conserved and in these genes they are in viable condition. Viable condition. Viable condition. For the question number 10, the correct option is the C that is a gene bank. Right. So, we have discussed till now the 10 question. 10th question the C option is the correct. So, the 10th, 10 different questions we have discussed from the different categories. Hope these all 10 questions, they are clear to you. Right. Students, so this is all about the today's session. We will meet in the next session when we will discuss more questions related to this chapter. Thank you students for watching this.